All right, look at what we've all got to deal with. Hi, and welcome to a tutorial for the All Work Gnome Play uh, pattern from Imagine Landscapes. I'm Sarah Shira, and today I'm going to help you make all of this into something adorable. So I've got stitch markers for attaching things while we're in the sewing process, and I've got my three mysterious bits, uh, the little decorations. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, the two ends and we're gonna, we're gonna tie them together and they're gonna flop around and that's okay. Um, it will curl up into a nice little ball. It's a lot faster than knitting a ball. So um, that's what we're doing with those. Just do a nice double knot so they don't undo themselves. And we're gonna do that for all three. We will be able to sew them on once we've made a spot for them. Uh, and we can't know where to sew them until we know what it looks like to have the I-cord sewn down. So uh, with Norwin, we've got an enormous amount of I-cord. About 17 inches uh, is what I remember from the Imperial version. I've got my end unsewn in because you may be curious about how this works out. Um, if you want to sew yours in right now, that's a great idea. Uh, the place where the I-cord tip meets the welt, or if you've done the garter option where it meets the garter, that will be the side of Norwin's face. Think about it as being the temple. So if it meets here, then her face will be here. All right, but this edge won't show. So don't worry about making sure that it uh, is uh, away from where this ends. Like this could end right here and we'd still be pretty good. So don't worry about that. All right, so what we need to do is we need to figure out how we're gonna do this. I like this to have a little loop at the top. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna space around and see, okay, if we do this, how do we like this? Are, are these roughly equally spaced apart? Okay, the answer is yes. Um, do we like the way they're spaced on the other side? The answer is yes. Now, one thing you will notice is that on the back, you will notice a tendency for the, the I-cord to be flatter and to be a sharper spiral on one side unless you're you're sort of like very careful and that's okay because that's like a very fine detail but we do want uh, just um, to remember that this is going to be sort of the left side of her face so if you don't like the way this comes in then play with that around a little bit now the way we've done this um, is I've got the long sewing length of yarn here at the end of the I cord, which means we're going to be sewing backwards. And if there's any kind of um, looseness in this as we sew, we're just going to gently and naturally push it farther and farther along because we want the I cord to lay flat against the hat. And then what you will end up with is all of a sudden a lot more cord at the top than you anticipated. So I really, um, when I'm doing this, I go in and I really, uh, I, I start at the top um, by securing it and then as I go I'm making sure that I'm really pushing it down so that there isn't a gap here that would result in forward motion so that um, it's not so much that I'm stretching it across but I'm making sure that there aren't these little air gaps all right so um, I'm gonna play around a little bit and come back with once I've got everything uh, a little better and show you roughly how I go about this. So I start by just pinning the base because if it's flopping around while I'm doing all this it's really annoying. So I will probably end up needing to move this and that's fine. I just uh, hook my stitch my removable stitch marker through. Um, if you don't have removable stitch markers and you have your needles you can also in a few places just kind of um, go through and then go through. Um, it's not as great, but it's an option. If you have sewing uh, needles, that's obviously also an option. So once that's down, then what I need to do is start from the top, make sure I like what's going on there. And the tendency will be for this to kind of twist and untwist. We will, we will deal a little bit with that, but I like how big that is right now, so. 
I'm going to spear this right through the eye cord and then through the top of the hat there. And then I'm going to push down and push down. Can you see how I'm already getting some gapping there? All right, so let's secure on this side here because I'm right-handed and that is much easier. Uh, pro tip that I'm discovering as I do this, make sure that all of these are open before you start. <laughs> Just take a moment every now and then to check that you haven't gone all the way through uh, because you're gonna need to be able to put your finger in uh, and as well as your sewing needle as you do this. This system is not perfect because obviously this is not fixing it down anywhere in particular like this This can lift up. It's not like it's it's really clamping it But uh, it does work pretty well and as I will say over and over again Wonkiness is no meanness. So if things don't look perfect I really think that you've got just an amazing gnome. I think a little bit of weirdness and wackiness really helps gnomes look like themselves what did I tell you about pushing more forward? Can you see just how much more fabric I've got or eye cord there to play with? So I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna make sure that the spiral is happening on the side that I know will now be front facing. So I will go in having sort of secured it all in one place there. Now I'm going to just do a little bit uh, on the other side to make sure that we're getting the spiral where we want it. A lot of these things, but not so many that uh, it's like a, like a porcupine. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to thread this onto um, a yarn needle. And I wanna make uh, two things clear before we start. One is that there's usually a right side and a wrong side to people's eye cord. There is usually a side where that was kind of the back and it will be more likely to have snags in it like here or just to be kind of loose and floppy. Before I uh, grabbed this, I did gently rub it between my hands all along and that really helped even out my tension on this one. It is so much better than my first prototype. I didn't think it really mattered with that prototype, but man, the difference it made was really startling with this one. So um, just uh, gently rub it. If you're finding it a little tricky, if you just get this just a teensy bit damp, I'll be honest, I licked it ever so slightly. Um, you're not obviously going to felt it because you're not like rubbing really hard. You're just rolling it around like a Play-Doh snake. And um, that really helped. But so if you have a side that is not so uh, attractive, just make sure that that side is always down. If we look at your, uh, these bigger stitches, much nicer, you can see that between two stitches, there is what's called the running yarn. So we've got our Vs here and we've got running yarn between them. There's also yarn here in the middle of the V. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing our needle up either in the middle of a stitch or between it doesn't really matter because this v becomes this w it doesn't really matter in terms of how we hide the the stitching uh, yarn but if we go up and then when we go back down we make sure we go back down over this running stitch that will secure it without, like if we go back in the same spot, it just undoes the stitch. So if we go over and that little ladder and go back down, then it will fade in between those two stitches. So that's what we're gonna be looking for, either between two stitches or in the center of a stitch. And if you change from stitch to stitch, that's fine, but you don't wanna be changing sort of like right here, obviously, that's gonna make it a little less visually uh, easy to hide. Although blue on blue would be clearly easier to hide than blue on yellow. Make sure when you are doing this that there is at least some yarn that is longer than the end. Otherwise you're gonna be working with two ends and you're gonna have, it, it's just gonna be annoying. So, so don't do that. All right, so I think this is probably my backside. So what I will do is I will flip this and just rotate this a little bit so this side that looks a little tidier is coming in here. So I'm going to come down here and for this stitch where we're just starting, I am going to grab the yarn, like put my needle through there and then straight through the eye cord to start. And that just gives us a place to begin. 
here in the middle of this V. So I'm going to go down in the next one and then come up a little later. Don't worry about having to do every stitch. Ah, uh, goodness gracious, that would be quite the quite the labor. So I recommend doing a uh, sewing it down about every centimeter or so. Um, and remember, as you go, just make sure to push it so that it's flat down. So every few places you're tacking this down, I recommend you go and you just kind of pull against that, kind of tug at it, because when we tighten, we can kind of make it buckle. So if we just take a moment and go back and just be like, hey, let's all be the same amount of tension, that can be a really nice way to get a smooth look. All right. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go round and round and round and then uh, it just takes a little time and a little patience. Uh, hopefully you are enjoying this and the way that the welt and the I chord are playing together. Uh, we will come back in a little bit and see what mine looks like at the end. I'm up here at the end. I'm just going to go through all the way to the other side of the hat. Just going right straight through. And then I want this to stay twisted rather than wanting to open. So I'm going to go back and forth a bunch of times going through and through. And then I am going to make sure that at least some of those take me really close to that edge. So this section here that I want to stay tight here, I am now going to go and sort of like hook it and then come back and hook this. So I'm switching from what's called a running stitch to a whip stitch. So running stitch was when we were just kind of running along and now I'm saying, no, no, I'm gonna grab you here and then I whip around and whip around. And so that's kind of what's happening here. So let's see how that's gonna look now. Yeah, see how that wants to stay a lot more rather than open? I will also give this a steam blocking. Just uh, take my iron and uh, puff some steam at it once Norman's all done, uh, just so that that wants to sit just a little more flat. Uh, of course, it would be useful if I was looking at the top. Here we go. So this is uh, gonna be the front of Norwin, and I've just done some of the sewing there, but it doesn't look too bad, and I think we're doing, we're doing pretty good. I should have checked that to start. Let that be a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I hope that helps. Um, now we're going to sew these on and then we are done with this section of the gnome. To deal with that end, I've just plunged it through and just somewhere in here I'm going to snag sort of halfway through a stitch. I'm going to do that again so I form a loop. Get that out of there, shorten up. And then I'm just going to go through that loop. And because we need to stuff things later anyways, I'm just going to leave this all stuffed up inside the hat. Uh, if that bugs you, go ahead and trim things, but that's where I'm at for that. So what we want to do with these little decoration -y bits is um, to just give us a little ending point right there. Thread one end on the needle of the big one. I'm gonna do mine kind of like little flowers in, in a little triangle. If you wanna do yours like three ice cream scoops, you go ahead. So I'm gonna do this one right at that junction of where the I cord and the welt meets. One through. And then just go through in a slightly different place so that when you knot these together it is a nice easy way for you to uh you've gone down not in the same spot then it knots over the yarn in between the two ends and that's what i'm doing um if this was a toy and i thought someone would be super uh rough with these i would probably weave these in and do something more but um 
mine will not be a toy. So I'm going to choose the next biggest of the two, which is this one. I'm going to do the exact same thing, slightly up and at an angle. So we're going to go here. Let's see what that looks like. And depending on what you do with the second one, you can also sort of change where it's pointing and what things are looking like. So just think about that. And before I tighten or not these, uh, this one, I'm actually going to grab the third one and I'm going to see what they look like all three together. The first one I cannot because it's kind of the base of the de decoration and uh, hides that spot where it joins everything. But now I want to see if I've got things proportioned the way I want and if things are looking nice and balanced. So if we do we do that. That is way too high. What was I thinking? That. And so, yep, that looks pretty good all three together. You're going to be able to see them sort of from the front, just as a little side decoration like that. So let's finish knotting those and then we're done with this clue. Uh, or if you're knitting this after it's a mystery knit along, uh, it is just done with this step. I uh, hope this helps. Um, one of the fiddliest things I think I've done in terms of like needing a long-term effort, but uh, man, the end product is so adorable. Um, I hope you agree that it's worth it. And if you don't agree with me, you just do something different with your Norwin. That is 100% your prerogative. So there we go. Norwin's hat finished.